Hello everyone, it is Christine here and I am back to do some work um, on my Roxy Journal of Stitchery, the piece that I am working on for field notes with the prompt of Spring Blossom. Um, so I've just loosely wrapped this um, piece around um, the card, which is how it's going to eventually be mounted and be part of my standing up accordion um, book on my bookshelf um, just so you can kind of see where um, I guess the framing of the piece will be. Um, in the previous episode which I'll link to we were laying um, out the piece with the story that I've got of the China flat um, peach so this is just the comic board card I'll probably be having two sheets of this together and wrapping my piece around it. Um, so I've stitched down um, all together with um, Travis Hairs. I was just sitting on the couch with um, with Travis and doing some, some stitching. Um, so I've picked up some of his Labrador fur. Um, but I've stitched down the piece all around the um, outside. So I basically just went around just with um, little invisible stitches on the front and longer stitches on the back. And I've had a little play with ribbon embroidery um, and just adding some other little um, decorative and anchoring stitches. I've got some ribbons here. Um, I've got some threads here. I'll just move them a little bit across. Um, I love these. This is my bowl that I made as part of um, one of the Roxy Vessel um, prompts and it's just great to keep my, my working threads in it. Um, and all of this is on a lovely um, linen sort of, um, which does really, really grabs the, the Labrador fur, but it's beautiful to, to stitch into. So I thought in this episode, um, we would, um, I've been adding little embellishing um, additional stitches to this piece of vintage embroidery that I'd attached on. Um, so we'll do some of that. And I'm thinking I might even use some pink just to add some further little pink um, little rosebuds using French knots. Um, I'll show you how I've done this um, and I might even bring this up a bit closer to the camera so you can see it. This sweet little ribbon um, blossom with the little stamens in yellow cotton over the top. Um, and we'll do one down here as well similar to this. I'll probably do it down on this one um, using a thinner ribbon but using the same sort of technique. Um, I don't think I'll come back in and put stamens in these ones down the bottom but I'll also show you how I'm doing these stamens onto this printed um, blossom design. I want to keep the blossoms um, in this one quite um, sort of not too much at the forefront so I don't want to put lots of stitches on the actual petals but I love putting the stamens in because one it acts like a sort of a canther stitch to hold the piece down um, but two it just adds a lovely um, yeah, embellishment and I'm using some beautiful uh, variegated just regular sewing cotton um, it's the Mako um, Orophil number 28 which is the weight of it I think um, and I do have some little, I thought some gold beads. I was thinking I'd use them there, but um, we might think about whether we want to add maybe some beading and it might doesn't necessarily have to be gold, but maybe some beading into the little um, flowers up here, depending whether they will still actually be, oh, they probably won't be visible. So I might pick out some other things at the sort of lower, lower level, um, maybe just to embellish that. And just bring in some of those those gold tones but I don't want to do too much um, stitching into the st strawberry um, thief um, beautiful William Morris uh, fabric I just adore it um, what else have I done since I think yeah the main thing has been yeah just stitching all the elements down so doing um, invisible stitching around the outside of all the fabric pieces and then stitching around here and then just um, adding stitches throughout and I was just using this regular um, sort of off-white vintage thread not sure what it is it's Molnikuk Sweden so Swedish um, spun synthetic but works nice again in my little um, little snuggle pot and cuddle pie um, holder. Um, so let's maybe start with the we'll start with um, this one because I've got this threaded on a little bit of this on a needle. I think this is actually a variegated because it looked like the colours were slightly lighter on this side. So I have just put a, a little um, sort of temporary knot in the end by just um, folding it over on itself and putting a stitch through. And then I think I'll do one over over here. So I'm just going to pop through from the back. 
and then I just see which way the ribbon wants to kind of fold across my piece I have a look where the end of the the petal is I don't know maybe I should bring you I'll just bring you down a little a little bit and then straighten you up a little bit still getting used to my my new stand So I look to see where the end of the petal is. I then let the petal sort of, I like it to have a little bit of um, extra sort of depth in it. So I let it sort of buckle up a little bit. And then I hold on to the ribbon on the front with the, my left hand and then just gently pull it down so that I get a beautiful little full petal shape. And I probably pulled that one a tiny bit too much. I got a little bit overexcited. So I'll just get a little, um, the end of a needle so the blunt end of a needle and just use that to sort of puff it puff it back out and I'll put my finger on that while I do the next stitch because I don't want to kind of pull that one tight in the process of doing the next stitch so I'm going to come back up from near the center and I think I've done the classic bad thing where you actually go through go through your knot nope we're all, all good <laughs> I think maybe I just twisted it a little bit Now, which way do I want my, which way does, it's more, less about which way I want my ribbon to go. It's about which way does my ribbon want to go. My ribbon wants to go that way. Where's the end of the petal? About there. So I take my needle just into um, the, in at the center at the end, and then I pull, pull through and just let it just form a sweet little, little petal. And I love that it just gets that little tuck at the end because that's what the actual blossoms themselves sort of have a little little indent at the end. So next one again, just going through the center of the ribbon. It wasn't totally in the center of that ribbon, but that's okay. Jennifer Clouston is very good if you're wanting to kind of learn about um, ribbon embroidery and she does lovely little daily daily snippets and has a few wonderful books out. So I hope you're having a lovely day. It is Sunday evening here. Um, thought I might have got some videos made this weekend, but <laughs> it's just been one of those one of those weekends. We went for a big big drive today we thought we were going to drive to Warburton for a picnic but then Alex was so excited about his new car that we kept driving um, all the way to Marysville so um, ended up being a, a big drive and we had our picnic there by the river I didn't actually take any footage today I'd left my um, phone in the car so Travis had a little swim in the the mountain stream he is an intrepid dog um, he always comes on our weekend outings with us we don't leave him at home so there we go, that is um, all five petals. So what I will do is just put a little, be very careful at this point not to not to pull your, um, your work tight. You just wanna leave it nice and loose on the front. I'll keep that piece of ribbon. You can even use little pieces of ribbon that size. Again, this one's probably tightened itself up a little bit so I'm just going to see if I can um, untighten a bit but the good thing with putting the little stamen stitches over the top is you can use that just to help sort of anchor your petals down a little bit that one just looks a little bit twisty but I don't think not always lost at all yeah we'll just use our little stamens to to fix that up so I'll get my variegated yellow, which is what I'm using down here, but I also used it for the stamens up here because it's sort of the perfect, perfect variation of colours. Um, I will use my nice thin needle. Oh, that's my belly making a digesting sound. Had some bolognese from the freezer that I'd... Thank you, previous Christine, for making that and freezing that and just, yeah, cooked up some fresh pasta to go with it. So what I'm going to do is come up um, carefully through the ribbon and I'm going to 
do a French knot. I think I'll do three wraps because I want these to have a bit of a bit of bulk to them. And I'm going to use this just to help sort of anchor the, the petals where I want them to be as well. So I'm just angling my needle back into the, the fabric to kind of anchor the petal in a good way. And I might even with this one do an extra little stamen to just anchor it also out this way. So coming back into the center so I'm just doing um, a little stitch down almost like a quasi like a quasi um, pistol stitch and what I'm going to do on this side is just capture a bit of the ribbon as well if I can yep there we go so I'm going to just capture a bit and just sort of pull it over this way as well with this little downward stamen stitch so that just helps to hold the the ribbon in position so then I'll come up inside the next probably just do two twists I think the three looks I think because this is a darker bit of the variegated it probably just looks a bit stronger yeah I think two is fine you can just play around with it as well like um, petals will so no not petals flowers will have different different sizes stamens depending on how mature the the little blossom is so then I'll come up in this one if you can see okay I think if you're on an iPad or iPhone you can kind of zoom in with your fingers on the screen I'm not sure how it works on an actual TV screen I'm virtually always watching my YouTube friends on my on my iPad. It's um, rare that I get <laughs> rare that I get to watch the TV downstairs. Sometimes when I'm cooking dinner, but then I can't really be yeah um, touching the screen or anything. And I prefer the iPad because I can easily leave leave comments and things, which I like to do. I like to encourage folks that really when you are making videos, it is just so lovely to to hear from from people well for me it definitely is lovely and I think the people I um, watch most often I think they enjoy a enjoy a comment as well I know when I first started out it was just um, so lovely to know that there was there was someone out there <laughs> someone watching and it still is because I do think of you all as I'm as I'm stitching away Think of those of you that might be having little trials and tribulations in, in life. Those of you that are having lovely, exciting, wonderful things happening as well. Think about you all. So lovely watching Kate with her little, um, the little tour that she had done with Green Door Studios with the lovely Zoe at Green Door Studios and saw Juju in the video as well. They went down to the um, the what are their sewing the sewing box um, sort of vintage sewing supply op shops in Sydney. So that looked like a great day out for them. So I might just do a few extra little stamens as well. And again, I might use them just to catch sides of the ribbon just to sort of stretch it out to where I want it to sit but yeah I just love this little delicate effect of having these um, these little thread thread stamens I'll pop one out this way as well so let me bring that up I'll just stand up so I can see oops no lights very bright when I bring it up like that let's see if we can get it to focus struggling a little bit isn't it oh there we go so yeah I probably won't go up and do those all over although I do have some other we'll have a look in a secchi um, or maybe we'll come back to that once we've done the other bits if we've still got time maybe that's a better option because you've probably seen enough well we'll do one more ribbon and um, I've got the smaller ribbon down below to use So yeah, I've, as well as I was telling you about the busy weekend of, yeah, we were out today um, and then, yeah, yesterday I was getting things packed to go on the holidays next weekend, which will be lovely. Um, while I've got this, actually no, I can put this thread aside and use um, on the needle. I'll go back and use, 
this needle to do these little ribbons. So yeah, I was packing sort of household things yesterday, packed my clothes as well so that they're done. The place we stay has a washing machine um, and dryer, so it means I don't really need to take that much clothing. But given we're in that sort of change of season time, it's hard to know whether we're going to have yeah, beautiful warm weather or um, sort of colder, more wintry weather. So I need a bit of a, a bit of variety, plenty of layers. So that's how I just put the little um, knot in the end of the ribbon. And then I'll come down here and do this little blossom down here. Again, I hope you've got, hope it's um, focusing. Okay. And so again, just going to look where the tip of the petal is and then put my needle through the ribbon halfway across it at the sort of tip point. Hold the ribbon with my finger to keep it flat and then pull it through and I'll get my sweet little, sweet little petal. Because these petals are slightly larger, I might even try doing two little um, stitches for each petal. We'll see how that goes. Now, which way does my ribbon want to go on this occasion? Let's do it that way. Yeah, where I'm going to overlay two over the top, I'll just come up through one bit of ribbon and then just... And I think it will work okay because, as I say, the petals tend to have that little indent at the end of them. I probably pulled that one way too tight, so let's just loosen it up a bit. And I'll put the second part of this one over here in. If you ever get any um, sort of, uh, what would you call it, resistance from the back, you might be trying to stitch through your knot and you definitely don't want to do that. So just kind of reposition your needle or check the back of your work if you get that. I just felt it as I came through here, but I don't think I got the knot. Because if you get the knot, it can kind of yeah make destroy your whole um, little bit of ribbon embroidery effort. So you want to avoid that. Then I'll come around and do the third petal. But yeah, it was really nice to re-pick up this piece. I took it in the car with me and apart from the really windy roads, um, I was yeah just stitching stitching down all the pieces because I've just yeah been so so busy also um, sorting out my craft room with the influx of fabrics from the um, D stash market and some recent um, yeah op shop hauls and other other goodies I've um, really needed to sort of re-sort and work out how many drawers I need for each of the colours of fabric. I sort my um, fabrics by colours generally, but then I have some specialist um, drawers as well. At some point I will, will give you a tour, but I do want to get all the fabrics in the drawers. I've still got some um, plastic tubs with um, folded fabrics and some yet to be folded around cards. I use just um, regular... Uh, postcard size card for folding the smaller bits of fabric and then the comic board card for larger larger bits but most of mine are in the smaller bits category I don't generally buy meterage unless I'm sort of buying from somewhere like an op shop or a, um, or the sewing layer where I might get a larger quantity but generally for slow stitch smaller smaller quantities work great as you can see on this like just little little scraps that's all you need to complete a lovely patchy patchy border so we'll do the second little bit on this one yeah I like that again I probably just pulled that one a tiny bit too tight so I'll just let that puff a bit back up Back. I'll just put a little knot but not pull it tight because I don't want to cause any issues on the front.
generally the ribbon embroidery will kind of stay in um, quite well anyway yeah I think that's worked beautifully that one was just with single little ones um, I actually wonder if I should come back I think I will come back in and just add um, some additional petals so they are the double well the sort of yeah the um, faceted petal effect on these so let's do that I'll pop up here oops that one the knot didn't stay in the end of my thread so I'll just but you don't have to do a knot you can just leave a little endy endy bit so I'll give that a go final one up here I think yeah that's given lovely lovely sort of um, I guess texture and a bit of a bit of volume to the petals so that's a good way if you've got a thinner ribbon but you want to kind of get a bit more voluminous petal that's how you can do it I'll give you a closer look at those hopefully Yeah, they're, they're very sweet. Okay. Put that bit of ribbon in there. Um, as I say, I don't think I'll do the centers on these. I want to keep them a bit more delicate and I like that they combine then with just the um, the printer design that I had designed in Canva. And I will will do a future, uh, maybe this week when I'm putting together my piece for Roxy's Journal of Stitchery, I might um, do that as a video. Okay. Um, I'll show you down here while we are here. Here's my needle. I think I just unthreaded my my thread. Um, I might get a another piece. Get a decent size. So this is just the variegated yellow using a nice fine fine needle. Whereas for the ribbon, you really want to use a chenille needle with a decent, decent eye on it. Oops. Just bodged up that knot, didn't I? Oh, what have we done? We've really bodged up that knot, but that's okay. We've got a knot in the, in the end. I might just need to trim off that little extra tail piece. And then I'll start on the back. I'll just put an extra little. Make sure my knot is holding. Just put a stitch in there. Okay. So um, I usually do the. You can do these as pistol stitches, but I usually just do my long stitches first, and then come back and put the French knots on them. I just like to kind of get the the design of the stamens first up. I hope the focus is working okay with all and it's not sort of going all bright because I do have the lights and the stand quite close to each other and I know the fabric sort of has that tendency to maybe go a bit, a bit light. 
I was going to do some filming this afternoon, but then, yeah, I ended up washing, giving Travis a, a wash when we got home from the, um, from Marysville. And then after that, gave him a dry and then, yeah, took him to the park so he could have a dry off in the sun. And I did do a little bit of um, the stitching that I, yeah, showed you here, but didn't have enough time to, to do a video before dinner. Got a yummy piece of cake waiting for me in the fridge actually when I finish this video. Don't normally have desserts, but got a cake yesterday. A sponge with jam and cream. I think I'll do two wraps for these stamens because it's the lighter bit of the thread at the moment. Oops. I think my first little stamen over there actually sort of sunk into the fabric, so I'll just come back and do that. So I'm just doing French knots with two wraps. So with a French knot wrapping it, is it, I think it's anti-clockwise around the needle, holding the thread with your thumb of the other hand and then just gently pulling, pulling through so that you get a nice little, tiny little knot. And so I don't think I'm going to do sort of canther stitching all over the piece. I'm just using these little bits of stitching to kind of hold hold it down. It's all anchored around the edge. Um, I don't mind if some of it sort of puffs, like I like that this bit's sitting up a little bit um, because it kind of gives a sense that it's stuck onto the page. I just think the page has quite a bit going on, so I'm not sure it needs the additional stitching detail. And I want to keep it sort of feeling lighter, spring-like. That's those little stamens and we're getting through to a yellower colour. So I'll move over here and do a few more. We don't have to do all the stamens together and in fact some at the back, I don't know, I probably will still do them I think. But you can always leave some looking like they are in the background. And so I'm broadly following the design, but also just following where my eye sort of wants to see the stamens be, if that makes sense. I'll just stab myself in the finger. These things happen. I was amazed in the car. I didn't sew to my pants. I didn't... <laughs> Didn't stab myself, didn't lose the needle in Alex's new car. I didn't dare. <laughs> Even told Travis that he couldn't keep having the window up and down because Travis kind of likes it open sometimes and with his head slightly poking out, it sometimes likes it closed. And we're still getting used to things. Um, it's so strange. Most cars that we've um, that have the um, the GPS, like they'll let the passenger type into it when you're driving um, to put like a destination in but this one says no nope, you can't you can only use the voice command but then it doesn't recognize the places that maybe we just weren't saying them the right way or with the right command but no we couldn't get it to recognize any of the the places we kind of knew where we were going anyway but i still prefer to put it in it'll always tell you the sort of most direct way there and then as travis was moving around on the the back seat it kept sort of thinking that um yeah triggering the the seatbelt warning. But yeah, it's a very nice car, very comfortable. It's even got air con like an, a little air conditioning function in the actual seat, so you can have like this little bit of air, <laughs> air blow up. <laughs> it's quite funny. And it's got heat heated seats, which my, my car's a, what year is my car? I think it's a, is it 20? Whoopee. 2015 or 2011? I'm so bad, I just don't remember. Maybe 20... 2011. Yeah, so mine's definitely not, not a modern car. It's just a good, good little performer. Nice little small zip around car. Happy with it. But Alex 
folks have been looking forward to getting a good sort of, yeah, family <laughs> family car for, them, for Travis and us. Uh, but one that's, yeah, all-wheel drive that we can take on tracks and things and go exploring. But I'm really not a, not a car person. But it's good that Alex has his, has his passions and has his things he enjoys. So he's been, yeah, it's given him a, a little hobby to learn all about it. And he's been programming it. You put your sort of, yeah, the driver in and it gets to, yeah, I think it says, hello, Alex. I think, I, I think he's going to actually have it say, hello, Alex and Travis, which is, would be very cute. When he gets in, he's like, oh, Christine, you've got to set it up for yourself. I'm like, yep, yeah, eventually. much rather spend my time stitching than programming a car but I'm happy he has something to keep him excited just like I feel about my stitching so yeah the variegated thread gives you a lovely a really lovely effect when you're doing something like this because you just get that yeah that color change as you go it's really nice on this one because the tips of the, the little knot ends of the stamens are darker than the, um, the length of the stamens. Which is a nice effect. Time. maybe we'll do a couple more stamens and then we'll move up here I think we'll just do this one actually I think then you probably had enough of stamens by that point and when I was stitching around as well I um, added extra stitches through any of the beading as well just to keep that secure particularly when you're trimming those pieces of others sometimes you can cut a thread so it's always good to put in a bit of bolstering stitching. It's just checking I didn't have a knot at the back, but no, we're all good. find it easier when I'm doing my French knots to have it sort of laying down on the surface. You could also of course have this in a frame but because I was working on it in the car it was much easier just to have it so I could hold it. I did take my other piece with me as well, my um, blossom embroidery, thinking that I might get get up to that, but I think I always overestimate how much I'm going to get done in a in a given time slot. So I will tie that one off. I might even just leave the thread there because I can use that a bit later on just to do a few more. But I'll just give you a little look at how that's that's all looking. Give me a tap. So yeah, I think that's sweet. So I'll just have a few more to do up there. 
Now I thought we could do, will we do another, no I think I said I was going to do that next. So the thicker green, um, that was part of the original design and these little bullion knot roses were part of the original design but then I'm just using some of this, um, I think this is a Mako um, Aurifil cotton as well, I think it's a number cotton 4-0, so no maybe it's not a Mako one. I'm going to cut myself a length and what I've been doing is just doing individual little um, almost like little spikes coming out um, from the plant or little branches um, but then I've been coming back and doing a little Y stitch um, and I'll just show you how I'm doing that and then I thought we might do some further little ribbon not ribbon um, further thread French knots just to make some little rosebuds possibly at the tips of these little ones so I'll start down the bottom. So I've got a green one coming out from there. And I did that so that I would actually be anchoring the piece of embroidery down, but without having to do stitching all around it. And so I'm going to do a Y. So with the Y stitch, I'm going to, oops, I just pulled my knot through, hang on. Let's start on the back and we'll put a little stitch in to hold our knot in place. So it doesn't pull through. Okay, let's do that again. And this one you probably won't actually be able to see because it's going to be over on the fold, so I don't have to worry too much, but I'll still show you the, the technique. So with the thread under my needle, going to pull through and that gives me a little Y shape and then I'll do an extra thickness um, back falling down the line that I had um, back to the stem and then I'll come over here and so I'm going to hold my thread and do another little Y stitch so you can see it makes a makes a Y with the thread and then I'll follow the other bit of thread back down to the, the stem I might put another one over here just to hold this bit of fabric down. So we'll do our long stitch first. So we're coming out there and then I'll do my... And I could do a single Y but I want to have that second bit of the bit of um, stem going down just a bit thicker so doing the double stitch for that. Coming back with the Y stitch and pulling it down there. Just gives that extra double thickness. For me, it's just the small details that we that we add. But I do love adding stitches, sort of with um, older vintage embroideries. I think it's nice to kind of add your own little your own little touch. I feel like I need another anchoring one just down to the rows here, so I might just do a plain, might not do a double, so I'm just going to do a single Y stitch coming down to here, which will just help anchor the, the cut out fabric down. I could of course go around that all with, um, yeah, with white thread or something, but sometimes I like the edges to have a bit more sort of, yeah, movement or fray in them. Do my Y stitch here. And then double stitch down to the bottom. Another one up here as well. Oops. This one I'll just have it angling down a bit so, oops, I didn't actually catch it. Put my um, needle back under and you can catch it to get your little Y 
shape again. Then I need to do one over here. So again, this is another one of those ones when you start out, you think, oh, it doesn't quite look look right. Um, but then as you get the massing of them, you kind of need to see them in, in numbers. So yeah, adding the little Y stitches to the top just gives them some extra interest rather than just being a straight little stitch. Just looks like another little branch extending out. And originally I was going to use a thicker crochet thread similar to the weight of the original embroidery, but I thought, no, it'd be nice to use the more delicate little thread. Just so it's not competing too much and not making it too, too bold. That was the thinking. There. So sometimes I'm actually doing the Y so there's another little bit sticking sort of up from the centre. Um, yeah, you can mix it up a little bit. It is nature. Which isn't uniform in how it grows. bit of the plant in the sunlight, the bit of the plant in the shade, it will all have a different different growth pattern. So I know many of you have finished your spring blossom pieces. There's just so much loveliness on the, the Facebook group. It's so nice when I see yeah folks from my my comments and then see them in the, the Facebook group and get to see what they've been creating. And I just, yes, I think I just went through, almost went through my, or did I do it in a previous, I think it was just that stitch. Okay, let's not stitch our backing, backing down. We'll just re-thread. It is worth periodically checking um, if you've got a larger piece of fabric that you haven't, yeah, stitched through it at some point. Thankfully that was just on that stitch that I picked it up. Um, where am I up to? Up to here. And I think I'm now around, I think this one doesn't have a little, doesn't have a Y on it. Just do a narrow little Y, I think, yeah. But otherwise, I think they are all, all in place. So I think that's pretty good. I'll tie that off on the back and then we might come in and do some little French knot rosebuds. Those um, yeah, little bullion knot um, rosebuds that are part of the original design, they're so delicate, so dainty. Okay, let's put my thread over there. I might need a bigger needle eye for this, I think. It's a nice, it's almost like a wool um, crochet thread. It's a vintage one. Hudeng sounds like it might be an Asian brand. Cotton pill. So it says cotton, but it yeah feels almost fluffy. Just trying to find where the where the end is. Where does it start? There we are. Okay, what have I got in the way of nice needles? Let's give this one a go. Sometimes with the woolly sort of textures, the sliding the knot down doesn't work that well, but thankfully that worked okay. 
So I think my piece will be folded over down the bottom, so I don't think I need to worry too much about rosebuds down there. So I'll start at this point, I think. So I might do, I might do a three wrap. So that I get a little sort of rosy, rosy centre to it. Oh yeah, that's nice. I just like that it starts to extend this out into the other, other fabric. Extends your design. This is one where I've got an extra little bit um, poking up sort of through the middle of my Y. And so I'll put the rose at the end of that one. So again, holding onto my thread with my thumb as I pull it through just so I get a nice little rosebud. I love all the fabrics and embellishments in this piece. It just makes me very happy to look at it. So I don't have to do a rose in every single little Y shape, but I can just sort of balance it to see what my eye, what my eye desires. So yeah, that's another thing you can do. If you've only got a small bit of embroidery, you can think how you can extend that when you add it to your piece. And at the same time, you're stitching your, um, sort of getting your things to sit flat on your piece and be secure, while also embellishing. Put one up here. What have you been up to on your weekends? I know my friend Annie was going off to the Bazaar Festival. The Festival of the Bazaar? No. Um, I think she was going to be having lovely food and dancing and all sorts of... as well as shopping for a lovely, lovely summer dress, I think. With the beautiful Indian reclaimed fabrics now. It wouldn't be a show with Christine if we didn't have a knot of some description forming, but we managed to we managed to salvage that, so that was good. This is a very good um, colour match. Even the other thread is such a good colour match for the original, original design. So with French knots, you want a needle that's relatively sort of straight up and down. Um, it just makes sliding the knots, um, sliding the needle through the knots much easier. Especially when you're starting out and yeah, you just want to make things as easy as possible for yourself. Oops, 
just done threaded. Just cut that raggedy end off. The um, base of my stand, so I'm just so happy that the stand's mostly metal. I think that should provide a lot more longevity to it, which is important to me. I don't want to be throwing things, throwing things out. Almost around here. And I do have to keep reminding myself that yeah, I'll be folding the fabric around the card so I don't need to go right to the very edge. It doesn't matter if some of your knots are slightly sort of looser when you pull them through because it just gives you that sense of a rose petal, rosebud unfailing. It gets harder as you get closer to the end of your, your thread, but I think I'm almost almost there. I think I'll just do one more down. Oh, one more here. Two, three. And can we fit one more in down here? Although, again, that might be at the fold. But we'll give it a go. One, two, three, just. So to keep my end, my end in. <laughs> What have I done there? Oh no, we're coming through. Yep, we got our little. I think I've actually pulled that little knot through. So, but that's okay. I'm going to. I'm going to take that as a sign that we are ready to tie off. So let me give you a little little look at how that all looks. I'll just tap the camera. So that is how my my piece is looking, which I'm pretty pretty pleased with. So yeah, I'll finish when I um, switch off the camera and have my little slice of cake. I'll come back and um, finish off the stamens there. Um, whether I've got some other thicker ones, but this one I don't. I think would be just too too thick. Just having a look at my other ribbons. I do have this one that's like a variegated. It's probably at this end it's a bit too yellowy. It's on a I think I've got it wrapped around something. No, I think it's more. But I've got this one. Which could be quite lovely. I could you use that on there? So I might do I might come back and oh, I've got enough time with you. Let's see if I can quickly get a couple of these done. Should just take a smaller length, I think, of the ribbon. May as well use these beautiful vintage ribbons. Not that needle. Where's my I'm using that needle? Okay. So let's just put a little little knotty knot in. And let's see how we go. So I think I might need to do the double petal, even with this. Oops, and it's popped through, hasn't it? So just need to watch from the back and leave a little, a little tail. Leave a tail like that. I'll come out and do... This, 
some reason this needle feels a bit tighter than the others felt. And then I'll do the second bit of the petal. I think it matters that the ribbon's a little bit of a different colour than the other ribbon because, yeah, the petals as they go through their sort of lifespan have a different different colour. If they're catching a different bit of the light, that will probably impact as well. For some reason, the eye of this needle just tends to get a bit more stuck. With this one, I just want to maybe bring that a smidge over. Need to sort of hold onto the ribbon and give the yeah the eye of the needle a bit of a wiggle to get it to go through nicely. I remember when I was petrified of doing ribbon embroidery, but it's one of those things you just have to kind of yeah start doing, give it a go. I think I might even do three bits of ribbon for this petal. It's an extra voluptuous petal. Oh no, it might be okay. I think when I put the little stamens in, it'll probably be fine. Which way does the ribbon want to go? That way, I think. Oops, and make sure we don't go through the through the other bit of fabric. That's when having it in a in a hoop can sometimes be more helpful, although sometimes you can still catch it even in a hoop. So sometimes you'll just want to sort of twist the ribbon to get it to lay flat if that's what you're wanting. Sometimes you don't kind of worry too much. But because I want the two bits of the petals to sort of come together. Oops, and I pulled that too tight, so I'm just going to get my other, other needle and just loosen, loosen that up a smidge. I can sort of get that to sit a bit better when I when I do the stamens but I probably won't do that in this video because it will end up going too long I'll definitely show you this finished piece when I probably come back and do my um, do some more work on my other spring blossom piece I don't have to rush through either. I figured that can be potentially a holiday project as well, doing more work on that one. Seeing how much work goes into creation of a beautiful doily with that other piece, paying tribute to the generations that came before us. Probably pulled that a tiny bit too tight, but I think it's okay. Just give this a tiny bit of a, a lift. There we go. I'm not sure why the eye of this needle is just so a little bit harder to to pull through, unless it's got some little catch on it or something. I'm not sure. Oops, I think I did just after loosening that. I think I managed to pull it tight from the the needle at the back. There we go. 
again. When I put the stamens in, I can just sort of spread the ribbon out a little bit to get it to sit just right. Or if I need to, I can do a three, a three piece of ribbon petal. Yeah, don't try and do ribbon embroidery with um, non sort of yeah silk or the sort of the artificial silk ribbon. It needs to be the really thin, um, really fine ribbon. So yeah, I'm just adding a third little one just to cover that cover that area. There we go. Beautiful. If I do say so myself. Again, I'll save that little bit of ribbon because you never know when you can when you can use that. So yeah, I'll come out and do um, some little little stamens um, off camera. But thank you so much for watching. And I hope you enjoyed, yeah, seeing this piece um, come together and almost, almost finished. But yeah, I'll come back in another, another episode and share an update. Thanks, everyone. Have a great week. Bye, everyone.